All right, Shalom. So <clears throat> this is the brother Mayum I'm coming at you from GMS Tampa Bay. First and foremost, I want to give all the praises and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rechakwadash. Double honors to the elders, apostles of Great Millstone, and much blessing and salutations to the Akim around the four corners of the earth who are diligently pushing out His truth and His truth and sincerity. Uh, so I just want to do a video uh, going into this whole Beirut uh, blast. Um, that occurred, uh, I think, two days ago, and kind of go into, you know, just touch on the fact that in the midst of all this happening, you know, no one's really blaming Esau, Edom, Amalek, all right, the the so-called Jays, all right, the the Forty Niners or the Forty Eighters, all right, nobody's really blaming the, these guys. You know, and not only are they right there, all right, they're just south of, uh, of Beirut, but they were the first ones on the scene, <laughs> so to say. All right, they were the first ones offering help. They were the first ones talking about they need this needs to be investigated. And I mean, that's I don't know about you, but to me, that seems like a clear indication of who who's involved. All right. I mean. Yeah, to me, it just makes sense because, I mean, look, this was um, a still that I took. I couldn't find the article again. I tried looking for it, but luckily the spirit had me take a screenshot of this one part. And it says, uh, at the top, it says, uh, well, the third paragraph down from the top, it says, uh, Meanwhile, Israel has denied involvement in the explosion. Rudder cited an Israeli official as saying, while the White House spokesman said that said the u.s administration was monitoring the situation closely and it's it's um it's it's such a coincidence that the two nations that are most likely involved in this are the first ones that you see uh, talking about this stuff man all right babylon the great and the land of israel okay these are the first two people that are, are basically on the scene but nobody, nobody thinks, nobody could even possibly think of that it was these people who had anything to do with it. But we're gonna get some scriptures, and we're gonna keep, we're gonna keep reading here. And this it says, um, and this is the point, the fourth paragraph down in the article uh, from uh, Middle East Monitor. Um, it says Israel ha has offered humanitarian assistance to Lebanon after a massive explosion rocked its capital Beirut on Tuesday. So, yeah, this happened two days ago. <laughs> it says Israeli Defense Minister Benny Gott said, reporters, Reuters, Israel has approached Lebanon through international security and diplomatic channels and has offered the Lebanese government medical and humanitarian assistance. A written statement from Gantz from Foreign Minister Gabi Ashkenazi. <laughs> you see, hey, I mean, who, who are the Ashkenazis? You know, you got to ask yourself why, you know. But, I mean, this is the guy's last name, but that's a race of people, the Ashkenazi. All right, the Ashkenazi Jays. All right. But what? This just goes to show you who the real cor corp uh, culprit is. Okay? Because, as the scriptures say in Sirach chapter 12, it tells you that these are characteristics of, of the wicked. All right. Ecclesiastes 12 and 10. We'll just start from there and skip around, get to the point. It says, never trust thine enemy, for like as iron rusts, so is his wickedness. And, and, and it's, no, it's no secret that Lebanon and the land of Israel, all right, that, that Israeli government have always had issues, man. They've gone back and forth for a long time. Okay, and now all of a sudden this, this so-called, this, this blast, I'll say that, because that, no, that wasn't no just regular explosion, that was a, a, an attack. It's just Israel is the first one on the scene offering help. Come on, man. How long? How long does this devil have to continue to show his horns before y'all realize that you do? Or Salaki, how long does he have to show his fangs before y'all realize y'all dealing with a snake, man? And it, and more so in these last days, Esau Edom just don't give a damn, man. Esau Edom is just he's gonna continue to just wreak havoc upon the earth and 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 expect you the people of this place to not do a damn thing about it man because that's how that's how he has the people uh, of the earth man 
and how dumbed down. This this damn devil could literally do something right in front of you and you'll still give him the benefit of the doubt. Especially you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, two-thirds of Israel, the real Israelites. Y'all motherfuckers are just, and it's lucky for my language, but y'all just sit there and, and, and watch the devil gun y'all down and then want to give him a hug right after, man. That's how much of an idiot you people are. But here it is, and I don't have any proof, but I know that was Esau, man, through the spirit, doing that whole that the, that whole blast over there in uh in Beirut, man. That wasn't no explosion of any kind. And and, and guess what? If it was an explosion, Esau caused it. That's how much of a de I don't put nothing past this devil, man. Not anymore. I don't put nothing past this devil, man. If it was an explosion in, in, in whatever container or something, I guarantee you Esau put a bomb in it, man. I don't have no proof, but the, uh, that's just what the spirit is leading me, nudging me towards, man. All right, let's read this again. So Rock 12 and 10. Never trust thine enemy, for like as iron rusteth, so is his wickedness. Though he humble himself and go crouching, yet take good heed and beware of him, because he is the beast man. <laughs> I added that in there, Salakia, but he, this, Esau is the beast man. Okay, but it said what? Though he humble himself, and what the article say? Israel has hof, offered humanitarian assistance to Lebanon after a massive explosion. So you see, they came humbly. Look, we're going to help you guys. I know we're enemies, but, uh, you know, we're going to come together on this, and we're going we're gonna to figure things out. In the meantime, we're going to give you some um, medical and humanitarian assistance. You see, it says though he humble himself and go crouching, yet take good heed. And you see, uh, the uh, Second Corinthians two and eleven says what? Lest Satan shall get an advantage, we are not ignorant of Satan's devices, man. And the men of the Lord, the elect, has put a spirit on uh, on his, the Lord has put a spirit on his prophets. Lord's will I be a part of that number to understand what this devil is doing, what his plans are. And when things like this happen, we 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 have a leg up, man, because we have the spirit of Yahweh Shimei and Shai upon us, man. So we're able to decipher the bullshit, and we know that what, though his words were smoother than butter, war was in his heart, man. Okay, I forget uh, what precept that is. Um, it's in Psalms. Um, the war is in his heart, smooth as butter. Let me see. Let me look it up. Psalms 55 and 21, it says the words of his mouth were smoother than butter. And this is talking about the wicked, man. Matter of fact, let's start up. 20, on verse 20, Psalms 55, verse 20 says, He hath put forth his hands against such as be at peace with him. He hath broken his covenant. And the so-called white man Esau Edom has been doing that since the beginning of time, man. <laughs> All right. He did it. He, he's done it, you know, really since way, way back in the scriptures. But even just in the here in the history of America, what? The treaties and covenants that he made with the so-called Native Americans, he backtrack on those. He started killing the Native Americans, taking them for even in the own so-called lands that does that Esau Eden was giving them in these reservations. Esau Eden was still going up in there and, and, and telling them what they could do, what they couldn't do, killing them, raping their women, taking their kids. He was still doing all that, man. And he continues to do that to this day. That's why these nations, the Lord is putting the spirit on these nations to, to, to work with this devil for a while. But now we're coming into the time to where the, the weaks are saying that they're strong. They no longer need uh, to deal with America. They can just tell, uh, say, and I'm talking about these other nations. They can just say to, to hell with this place, man. We don't need them. Why, why do we need them when we already got this? Why do we need them when we already got that? You see, this is the time period that we're coming into, but you still got pe you still got the people out there that are dece deceived. And they don't understand that this is the devil the Bible speaks of. Esau Edom. Alright? But slowly but surely, these nations are waking up and it's gonna get to a point to where this place is gonna be utterly obliterated. As this as these people have done, it's gonna be done unto them. And twofold, man. All right, but continuing on here in the Psalms 55, verse 21, it says, The words of his mouth were smoother than butter. Yeah, it's sounding, it sounds good. I'm talking about uh, um, he's going to send humanitarian help. America is the first on the scene investigating, see who really did this. Was, was this an attack? Yeah, it sounds good. 
it says, but war was in his heart because ultimately that's what Esau Edom wants, man. He wants war. He wants to prosper because that's how he prospers, through war, because that's his blessing. Anything that has to do with, with, with his blessing and him being able to use it to achieve a goal, guess what? Esau's all about it. And for, him, and for Esau to implement a new world order, he's got to bring chaos and war to the earth so that he can come with a solution, man. So that he can come with his solution, man. Using his sword, man. Because And that's what Esau wants. That's why he's doing these things around the world. He's stirring the people up. And it's all through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shemim Shai because the way of man is not of his own, but the Most High who directs his steps. You see? So this is all of the Heavenly Father. The Lord has put, put the spirit on this devil. And, and the scriptures say the Lord has created the wicked for the day of evil, man. But here it is. We're in the evil days, but the, 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 the wicked's not here. You see, the, the, the scripture says, though hand join in hand, the wicked shall not go unpunished. So you, you, you sambo as simpletons out there. I want to call you that. I want to call you something else. But you sambos out there. That thinking that the so-called white man is a good guy and he's he's gonna be okay, he's gonna be saved too. You gonna be you gonna be destroyed with him, man. You gonna be destroyed right along inside his pale ass, man. This is Sirach back in Sirach chapter twelve, and uh, we're gonna skip down verse fifteen. Sirach just to you know just to get some points. Sirach 12 and 15 says, For a while he will abide with thee, but if thou begin to fall, he will not tarry. Right. And that's Esau eat him to the to the max right there. Alright? He gonna he gonna stick around with you while you making money because he's making money. But as soon as you start to fall apart, as soon as you, especially when it comes to governments, when your government starts to not go the right way, he's gonna make sure you collapse. And then he's gonna disappear from you. And be like shit, I Esau, Esau's a snake, man. As soon as trouble comes, he's out of there. And he's the one who caused the trouble. But see, he he this is the devil, man. He leaves, he causes the trouble, he leaves. Then when he's when you see that you're in dire straits, here comes Esau Edom to the rescue. And now he got you in, in, in his trick bag, because now you owe him one. You see? Esau Edom ain't stupid, man. We see right through his bullshit. All right. Verse 16, it says, An enemy speaketh sweetly with his lips, but in his heart he imagineth how to throw thee into a pit. And that's Esau Edom. Here it is. He's offering this humanitarian help. All right. These, these Amalekites, these Ashkenazis, okay, these 48ers, they're over here offering uh, humanitarian help and the government assistance. But really, in their heart, their mind, the La'ab, they're imagining how to throw those people over there in Lebanon into a pit, man. How can we take over this land? You see? Oh, come on, man. The, 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 the proof is in the pudding. All right? Continuing on, and this is the point here. Verse, uh, I'll, let, me, let me finish 16 on Salakia. It says, but in his heart he imagineth how to throw thee into a pit. He will weep with his eyes, but he, if he find opportunity, he will not be satisfied with blood. You see, so he'll, yeah, sure. You had hundreds of people die. We'll weep with you. But guess what? As soon as he sees that, that moment of weakness, and he has that opportunity to strike, he's going to do so, and he's going to get you, man. And you're going to be looking there. You're going to be you're gonna be sitting there on your little couch wondering what the fuck happened to you. That's how stupid you're going to look for trusting in this and trusting in the enemy, man. Okay? Now here's the point, verse 17 and 18. So Rock 12 and 17, it says, If adversity come upon thee, thou shalt find him there first. And though he pretend to help thee, he shall yet shall he undermine thee. Right, and this is where we're at right now with Esau Edom. Yeah, he, hey, adversity came to those people in Lebanon. Who's there first? The, the Israeli government and the American government. Offering assistance and, and offering uh, uh, offering to help investigate. Of what really happened? Come on, man! You gonna set? You gonna send the guy who caused the whole thing to investigate the the, the situation that he created? All he's got to do is not not show no evidence that he had anything to do with it. And you people will believe him. You see, it don't make no sense to. to here it is. You're a detective. You commit a crime, and you get sent to go investigate the crime. 
I mean, what kind of sense does that make? But here it is. The people trust them. You simpletons out there, you trust this damn devil, Esau, Edom, the so-called white man. You trust him. So you let him go do it. You, you, There is no way in hell in your mind that Esau, Edom has anything to do with anything evil. He's a so-called white man. He's pure. He's good. Right? That's what you people say. No. This man is a wicked that the Bible speaks of. And he's going to be put to death. The Lord has a, a, a forever indignation. <laughs> All right? That's an oxymoron. But he, the Lord has an indignation with these people, man. Read Malachi chapter 1, verse 4, and see what it says. I'll let you do it. But it says, If adversity come upon thee, Sirach 12 and 17, thou shalt find them there first. <laughs> Ain't that something? You, there, thou shalt find them there first. And though he pretend to help thee, yet shall he undermine thee. He will shake his head and clap his hands and whisper much and change his countenance. So now you're going to start having people, oh, this was an accident. These people, they, they must not know what they're doing over there. They're just going to just drag the workers that are completely fried up right now, can't defend themselves. A whole a whole radius of buildings down there are, are destroyed. So it's not really like there's witnesses to anything. But here it is. They're going to start to blame the workers. They're going to do, oh, well, there was... It was the people who they were storing. They shouldn't have been. They shouldn't have kept all these chemicals there. They sh those things should have been left. But due to COVID, we had they had to keep them there. Man, we see the bullshit, Esau. We see every angle you can come up with, and we're sitting here exposing you. Why? Because this that hour for the man of sin to be revealed, and the spirit is going to be put on us through the spirit of, through Yahweh Bashim Shai to expose you, man, and to reveal your plans. To put it out there in fruition so the other nations will pick up on that vibration and, 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 for, and further along the, these prophecies, man. Because we want this place to be destroyed now, man. And the Heavenly Father is going to speed up the times for the elect's sake. And he's going to get closer and closer to the destruction of this place through the through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Shai. And he's going to use these other nations to do it. Okay? But with that, I want to give all praises and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rechak, Wadash. Double honors to the elders, apostles of Great Millstone. And much blessing and salutations to the Akim around the four corners of the earth who are diligently pushing out this truth and this truth and sincerity. With that, I say, Shalom.